We present Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband, based on the delightful stories of Isabel Scott Rorick's gay, sophisticated Mr. and Mrs. Cougar, starring Miss Ball with Richard Denning. Let's look in on the Cougats and see what they're doing. It's morning, and George Cougat is seated alone at the breakfast table. Liz is helping Katie, the maid, in the kitchen by fixing the toast. Liz, is the toast ready yet? Oh, just a minute, dear. Now it's ready. <laughs> Liz, what was that noise I heard? Nothing. Oh, how do you want it scraped, dear? Light, medium, or charcoal broiled? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, if you hadn't heard me, you'd never know the difference. Here you are. Liz, you scraped it too hard. It's back to bread again. Well, I can't help it. It's a toaster's fault. If you'd fix half the things around here... Now, wait a minute. I did fix the toaster. I tightened the spring yesterday so the toast would pop up better. Oh, you did that. Well, you made the spring too tight. And you better apologize to Katie. What for? She fell into the sink running back to catch a high fly. <laughs> yes. And if it ever learns to throw a curve, we're really in trouble. Well, it's a perfectly good toaster. I'll, I'll try to fix it. You'll try to fix it, yeah. Well, what do you do, buy a new one? Either that or get Katie a fielder's mitt. <laughs> oh, George, let's not fight so early in the morning. No. All right. We, we'll wait a while. <laughs> Uh, somehow I feel this is going to end up in a new toaster. Don't be silly. Your morning kisses are like coffee to me. That's how I wake up. Liz, I have a confession to make. What? My caffeine's been removed. <laughs> oh, silly. Come here. Sanka. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> You know, George, the way we kiss, I don't need a new toaster. You don't? No, just put a piece of bread in my hand and kiss me again. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, George? No matter what we argue about, a kiss from you fixes everything. <laughs> you know, you could get around anybody with a kiss. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, when I get to work, I'll try it on Mr. Atterbury. Hey, what's that? It's in the kitchen. Katie! Katie, what's going on out there? Mrs. Cougat, Mr. Cougat, run for your life. What's the matter? What's happened? The automatic dishwasher has gone crazy. It's <laughs> broken again. Oh, it threw every dish in the kitchen at me, and it's trying to climb into the cupboard to get some more. <laughs> oh, now, Katie, you mustn't be upset. It's not that tragic. Oh, I can't help it, Mrs. Cougat. That thing hates me. <laughs> Well, you go back to the kitchen and get even with it. Pull its plug out. Yes, ma'am. George, I'd like to talk to you about a new dishwasher. Kiss me, Liz. Oh, no. No, with the toaster, it just meant burnt toast. This time we may lose Katie. Why, that's ridiculous. What's the matter? Can't she wash dishes in a pan like everybody else? Well, but she's had the dishwasher so long, she might resent it and quit. You know we can't find anyone nearly as wonderful as she is. Well, what are women coming to that, that they have to be pampered with electrical gadgets? Oh, we're not pampered. Well, the wives of our ancestors didn't have dishwashers. Pioneer women didn't have a lot of electrical appliances to do their housework. Of course they didn't. And where are those women today? Dead. <laughs> well, I'm not buying Katie a new dishwasher. And you can tell her so. She'll get rough red hands. Well, what of it? She's got rough red everything else. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the truth, George. I wasn't thinking, Katie. I, I was thinking of someone else. Uh-huh. Well, come clean. Whom were you thinking of? Oh, you're so grammatical. Well, I can't help it. That's correct. Whom were you thinking of? Hume. <laughs> Meme? I mean, me? What are you talking about? Well, if we don't have a dishwasher and it's Katie's night off, I'll be washing the dishes. 
I thought so. Oh, I don't care for myself. But when you come home and you greet me, and you, you kiss my hand... Yes? You'll get dishpan lips. <laughs> Liz, you're, you're breaking my little heart. But I'm not buying Katie a new dishwasher, and you can tell her so. She's liable to get mad. So? You tell her, George. Uh, no, Liz, uh, you tell her. What's the matter? Are you afraid? Me? Afraid? <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. Well, when you stop laughing, you tell her. <laughs> well, Liz, it, it's just that I don't want you to be a slave in your own house. You, oh. you have to be the boss around here. Let her know who gives the orders. Do you understand? Yes, you're afraid of her. No, she means nothing to me. I, I just want you to learn a lesson. All right, I'll tell her. I'm not afraid. I'll get her in here and I'll say to her, Katie, did but... someone call me? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs. Kugat has uh, something to tell you, Katie. No. Uh, yes. Uh, Katie, there's something you might as well know right now. What is it? I want some more coffee. <laughs> That's telling her, Liz. Oh, why don't you go to work? Katie, could I talk to you a minute, please? Just a second, Mrs. Cougar, till I get through washing these dishes by hand. Oh, don't worry, Katie. I'll get a dishwasher somehow. I asked Corey Cartwright to come over. Well, what for? I didn't think he knew about anything except women. He doesn't, but he has a lot of friends in radio, and I thought maybe if he could get me on a giveaway program, I might win a dishwasher. Do you, do you think you could win? Oh, listen, I've heard some of those shows won by morons, and I'm as smart as they are any day. <laughs> Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. That must be Corey. I'll get it. Oh, he's in a hurry. Quick, close the door. What's the matter? Women. I can't get rid of them. Crowds of them chase me down the street. Oh, well, it must be tough to be so irresistible. Hey, what's this dragging along in back of you? Oh, that. Oh, that's nothing. Let me see. Why, Corey Cartwright, a bottle of taboo on a string. <laughs> well, it's a game I play. It's like fishing, only for women. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Say, uh, what was on your pretty mind when you asked me to drop by, dear? Corey, are you still friends with that fellow who puts on radio shows? Well, sure. I've been on a lot of them lately. Two more programs and I'll have all my Christmas shopping done. <laughs> well, could you get me on one? Absolutely. What do you want to win? I've got a list of what they're giving away. Mm -hmm. Refrigerators, stoves, automobiles, diamond rings, wristwatches and kitchen utensils. Yes, but I want... Garbage all... disposal units, Hoover vacuum cleaners, fur coats, house paint, pianos, radio phonographs, record albums. But you see, I'd like Typewriters, to have... six office buildings, a parking lot in downtown Los Angeles, and Arrowhead Springs. <laughs> Let me off at electric dishwashers, please. Oh, it's a cinch. There's a program that gives away a dishwasher each week. It's called His and Hers. Corey, you've got to get me on it. Oh, there's nothing to it. Give me the phone. Phone there. Hello? That's you, Smiley? This is Corey Cartwright. How are you, you old son of a gun? Yeah. See, a couple of friends of mine would like to get on His and Hers. A couple? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's a banker. His name is George Kuga. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, swell. Goodbye, Smiley. Oh, Corey, wait. Well, Liz, you're all... On the show, too? Oh, sure. Husband and wife teams compete together. That's what makes it fun. Oh, I don't know how George is going to take this. He doesn't know about it? No. Oh, you'll die. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, listen, Liz, you're not on till next week. Now, have George listen to the show. It's on tonight. And see if you can talk him into it. Remember the name, his and hers. All right, I'll keep his ears glued to the radio if I have to use scotch tape. <laughs> well, George, we have a whole evening to ourselves. What would you like to do, honey? Oh, I don't know. I can't make up my mind between going to a movie or visiting the Sterns. You decide. All right, I decided. Which is it going to be? We'll stay home and listen to the radio. But, Liz... I want to be alone with you, George. We can smooch. We can? <laughs> I could smooch with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, with time and a half for over smooch. <laughs> uh, say, what's, what's this radio business? I thought you didn't like radio shows. Me? 
Oh, no, I love radio. I listen to it all day long. Oh, yeah? What programs? Uh, uh, Portia Faces John's Other Wife. What? Uh, Ma Perkins Can Be Beautiful. No, Liz. When a girl marries, it pays to be ignorant. No. Libby Owens, Glass Girl, Glass Blower. Oh, stop it. What scheme is brewing in that pretty little skull? Nothing. I just want to listen to the radio. I'll turn it on. Yeah, all right. As long as it isn't one of those horrible quiz shows. Quiz shows? Oh, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a lot of silly characters making fools of themselves in front of a microphone. Oh, I, I think they're a lot of fun. How, how, how can a person with any self-respect appear on one of those things? And now, ladies and gentlemen, our last contestants will come up to the microphone to compete for our big jackpot prize on his and hers. Mr. and Mrs. Paul Roney. Liz, that's a quiz show. Now, can either of you tell me the answer to this question? What is stored at Fort Knox? Yeah, now, that, now, that's an insult to his intelligence, and any fool knows what's stored at Fort Knox. Sure, gelatin. <laughs> Here, turn that thing off. No, I want to listen. Gold is right, and Mr. and Mrs. Roney win the jackpot for tonight's his and hers. Good night. You, you mean both a man and his wife go through that? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is there no bottom due to a human being's dignity? And now we'll announce the names of next week's contestants. Oh, no. What's the matter, Liz? Uh, you're right. It's silly. Turn it off. Mr. and Mrs. Tom Lefebvre. No, I want to see who the suckers will be next week. <laughs> Dr. and Mrs. Charles Van Tassel. And what other half-wits? Mr. and Mrs. George Coogan. <laughs> Liz. Well, let's go to a movie. <laughs> Liz, sit down. I don't like the look in your eye, George. I can explain everything honestly. Go ahead. Put the lamp down, and I will. <laughs> I'm just holding it so you won't knock it down. Now, stop shaking. All right, all right. I wanted a dishwasher, and Corey knew the master of ceremonies, and he fixed it up for us, that's all. My pal. Well, maybe he can find a job for me when Mr. Atterbury at the bank hears about this. Oh, he'll love having his vice president on a quiz show. No, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, George. How's the quiz, kid? Oh. Hello, Harry. Just heard him say your name on the radio, George. Congratulations. Uh, look, Harry. Uh, we're not this going... This is only the beginning, George. Maybe if you give yourself a home permanent, you'll be chosen queen for a day. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, goodbye, queenie. <laughs> Liz. Yes, Your Majesty? That's not funny. In half an hour, everyone in town will know about this. Oh, another wise guy. Well, I'll tell him a thing or two. Yes, I know. Quiz kid. Queen for a day. <laughs> and keep your smart answers to yourself. George, this is Mr. Atterbury. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's Mr. Atterbury. Well, goodbye, George. You stay here, you... No, not you, Mr. Atterbury. George, I just heard your name on the radio. Oh, well, I can explain everything, Mr. Atterbury. You see... I'm for you, boy. <laughs> uh, yes, but my wife... Uh, what did you say? It's a stroke of genius. Excellent publicity for the bank. Oh, you, you, you like the idea? Why, it's sensational, boy. The kind of forward thinking we need. Show the public how intelligent bankers are. How'd you ever think of the idea, boy? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. It, it came to me right out of the air. Well, it was a great idea, and I'm proud of you, boy. <laughs> Thanks. Talk to you at the bank tomorrow, boy. Yeah, well, well, goodbye, Mr. Atterbury. What'd you say, boy? <laughs> boy? Liz, he, he wants me to go on the show and prove how smart bankers are. I'm worried. Oh, don't worry, dear. I'll be right there with you. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> oh. oh. Now, 
Now, Liz, hmm? I brought all these books home from the library. Uh -huh. And you know what we're going to do with them tonight? Press flowers? <laughs> no. No, we're going to study for that quiz show. Mr. Atterbury got a block of seats, and everybody in the bank will be there. Oh, I've got a good idea, George. What? You answer all the questions. I'll just stand there. Yeah, oh, don't be silly. If you don't open your mouth, what'll I tell them? That, that you're dumb? And if I do? <laughs> well, I see what you mean, but... <laughs> but let, let, let's give it a try. Now, now here's some history questions. Uh, uh, here. Uh, what is the Monroe Doctrine? Monroe Doctrine? Yes, you, you, you know which Monroe it refers to, don't you? Oh, sure. Racing with the moon, <laughs> I the midnight blue. No. Well, never mind. I'll answer the history questions. Now, now let's try some natural history. Yeah, here. What is the name of an animal with long, sharp fangs and a shaggy head who stalks his prey at night? Oh, that reminds me, Cory was here today. <laughs> Never mind. I'll answer the nature questions. Now, that, that brings us to arithmetic. Oh, you answer the arithmetic questions, George. Uh, Liz, I've got a great idea. What? I'll answer the questions. You just stand there. Oh, good. I'm glad you thought of it. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Liz, dear. Hello, Corey. Well, tonight's the big night, hmm? Yes, and Corey, I'm just frantic. I don't know why I ever got into this. I'll disgrace George for life. Oh. He could even lose his job at the bank over some stupid answer of mine. Oh, Liz, don't be ridiculous. He'll have to give up his lovely office at the bank. He'll lose his swivel chair. Just think, all the rest of his life, he'll never swivel again. <laughs> I thought you might be upset, Liz. Oh. <laughs> what would you say if I told you I had the list of answers to tonight's question? <laughs> Where are they? Here. I got them from Adele, the producer's secretary. I uh, had a date with her last night. Oh, Corey, I couldn't look at them. That's dishonest. Wouldn't be fair. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Maybe one little peek. Just one. I'll just peek at the first question, that's all. All right. Oh, what do you know? I had the list upside down. I peeked at the last one by mistake. Now I guess I'll have to peek my way back up to the first one. <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. How can you remember them? Sure. Al Jolson, the sap runs every two years, mm -hmm. life with father, mm -hmm. and to scrape the barnacles off her hull. That's right. That's right. I wonder what the questions are. That one about the sap running, that must be about trees, huh? What do you care, as long as you have the answers? You're a cinch, Liz. Oh, this is just wonderful, Corey. George is going to be so proud of me. Oh, Katie, I'm so excited about the show. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, take one look at me before I go. Is my slip showing? Yes. How much? All of it. Uh, you forgot to put your dress on. Oh, oh, my goodness. Here, help me with it, Katie. How old are you? All ready, honey? In just a minute. Al Jolson, the sap runs every two years, life with father, to scrape the barnacles off her hoe. What? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, how do you feel, Liz? Uh, get some facts into your little head? You know, George, you're going to be very surprised. I have a feeling I'm going to know all the answers. Well, now, now, don't do anything silly. I won't. Uh, let me take the first crack at the answers. Oh, don't worry, George. I won't do anything except make you very proud of me. Well, goodbye, Katie. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye, Katie. Kiss me for good luck, George. All right. Hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know about that show, His and Hers, but there's nothing wrong with yours and mine. <laughs> Come on, crazy. Let's get this over with. All right, everybody. We're going on the air in just two seconds. Now, now quiet, quiet. Presenting that sensational new quiz show, His and Hers. <laughs> Yes, it's time once again to play that lovable, laughable radio game, His and Hers. 
and here's your master of ceremonies, Smiley Stembottom. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. This is old Smiley Stembottom. Here we go with another session of his and hers. We have with us tonight uh, three man and wife teams, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Charles Van Tassel, uh, Mr. Tom LaFever, attorney, and Mrs. LaFever, and Mr. and Mrs. George Cougar. Yay, George! Go get them, boy! <laughs> Uh, apparently, Mr. Cougar has some friends in the audience. Now, uh, while our contestants are waiting in a room off stage, I'd like to announce that because we have such an intelligent group, a doctor, a lawyer, and a banker, we have thrown out the easy questions we were going to use and have substituted harder ones. Now, coming onto the stage are our first contestants. Uh, you must be Dr. Van Tassel. That's right, and this is my wife. <laughs> Apparently, Mrs. Van is tickled by her own tassel. Is she a little nervous? No, she always sounds like that. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go for our first question. Now, you only have one answer between you, so think carefully. Who discovered the fountain of youth and claimed he could live forever? Uh, Ponce de Leon. Absolutely right! Uh, what do you say to that, Mrs. Van Tassel? <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> now you have 25 points, and we'll go to the next question. What is your congressman's... I guess they'll call us pretty soon, won't they, George? Yes. Now, now don't be nervous, Liz. Oh, I'm not nervous. Well, let's go. Isn't someone knocking at the door? No, that's your knees. <laughs> All right, so I'm nervous. I should think you'd be, too, that, that those questions are liable to be tough. Oh, don't worry, George. I have a feeling I'm going to know every answer. Oh, look who has that feeling. Oh. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cougat, we're ready for you. Oh, here we go. Come on, George. And here they come, our third contestants, Mr. and Mrs. Cougat. You tell them, George! <laughs> Yes, please. And now, uh, right up here to the microphone. Are you all ready for these questions? They're pretty hard. Oh, I'll bet they're not so hard. Well, we'll see. Now, uh, one answer for the two of you, remember. First question. Who discovered the fountain of youth and claimed he could live forever? Al Jolson. <laughs> oh, Liz. I'm so sorry. That's wrong, Mrs. Cougar. It is? Yes, but let's go on to question number two. Okay. Question number two. This is political. What is your congressman's term of office? The sap runs every two years. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Liz, have you gone crazy? Something's wrong, George, but I'll get the rest of them. Oh. Well, let me answer this one. All right, George. Uh, question number three. What has caused America to have such a great increase in population? Well, George? I don't know. Uh, would you repeat the question, please? Uh, what has caused America to have such a great increase in population? Is it life with father? <laughs> Wrong again. You uh, now have a total score of nothing. Oh, God, you're a stupid anomalous guy. No coaching from the audience, please. <laughs> and now for your last question. Oh, I'm sure to get one of these right. Why did the French people put Marie Antoinette under the sharp blade of the guillotine? To scrape the barnacles off her hull. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Cougar, you are the first husband and wife team ever to miss all four questions. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh, Liz. And now all the contestants will... Liz, what's the matter with you? Oh, George, I had all the answers memorized, but they must have switched the questions on me. Oh, fine. Attention! <laughs> Before the jackpot question, here are the standings of our contestants. The Van Tassels have 75 points. The Lefevers have 50 points. And the Cougats have... 
Now, uh, since our jackpot question counts 100, whoever gets it right will win our giant prize, an electric dishwasher. Oh, we still got a chance, George. Yeah. And tonight we're adding a special prize to go with the dishwasher. 300 dirty dishes. <laughs> now, here's the jackpot question. At the last session of the Big Four Foreign Ministers in Paris, when Russia and the United States were in disagreement, what did Andrei Vashinsky say to Secretary of State Marshall? Oh, come, someone must know it. What did Andrei Vashinsky say to Secretary of State Marshall? I give up, George. Let's go home. You're right! <laughs> that is what Vashinsky said to Marshall. I give up, George. Let's go home. <laughs> and who dare swim the electric dishwasher? Russian. Vyshinsky, <laughs> you're wonderful. Come on, everybody, the borscht is on me. George. Hey, George. Are you asleep yet? No. When, when you're trying to sleep, do you ever pretend things? Mm-hmm. What? I pretend that you've stopped talking. Oh. My favorite pretend is that I'm a, I'm a beautiful princess who swallowed a, a magic potion and I sleep for 20 years. Hmm. What are you thinking? I'm wondering where I can get some of that potion. Oh, George. You aren't very romantic. Come on, pretend something. Okay. I pretend I'm all alone on a deserted island. Uh -huh. And I see coming toward me a girl with flowers in her hair. Oh. Now, what do you pretend? I pretend she's ugly. Good night, George. <laughs>